your 64 centimeter diameter car tire is rotating at 3.3 revolutions per second when suddenly you press down hard on the accelerator. That is to say, you press down uh, hard on, on the gas pedal. After traveling for 220 meters, the tire's rotation has increased to 5.7 revolutions per second. And using that information, we can figure some things out. So first of all, um, what was the tire's angular acceleration in radians per second squared? Let's keep in mind what we have. We've got a round object and it's rolling and it's doing free rolling, also called rolling without slipping. And so it's probably worth drawing a little picture here to remind ourselves that when you've got a round object like a circle or wheel, something like that, that has a radius of R, this thing is rotating. It's rotating at an angular velocity of omega. And while it rotates, it is making contact with the ground, not slipping at all. So at some later distance, it will end up here, say, and we could call that distance S. How far has the wheel moved? How far has it translated? It has moved the same distance that any particular point on the wheel has moved uh, equivalent to how far it would have moved around its edge. In other words, the distance that it has traveled is equal to um, r times delta theta, where delta theta is the total number of radians that the, uh, that the circle has rotated uh, with. Okay, so we have omega, we have delta theta, and we have angular acceleration. All three of these uh, um, angular quantities to think about, let me write it in this order, the change in angle, how far it's rotated, the angular velocity, and the angular acceleration. Meanwhile, the wheel has had some linear displacement or linear change in position. It's had some linear velocity and it has some angular accelerate, uh, linear acceleration. All three of the linear quantities are related to the angular quantities like this. The linear speed is equal to r omega and the linear acceleration is equal to r alpha. Again, these apply when you have free rolling or rolling without slipping. So, um, this is what we have to use. Now, what are the knowns that we have here? We are told about, well, there's a diameter of this wheel, so R would be half of the 64 centimeters, in other words, 32 centimeters, which we should write as 0 .0, sorry, 0 0.32 meters. What else do we know? We know the angular speed at the beginning or the angular velocity at the beginning you could write it as 3.3 revolutions per second, but that's not quite the right unit. We need to make sure that we're measuring angular speed and angular displacement and so on in terms of radians or radians per second. How do we convert? Remember that there are two pi radians in every one revolution, and this conversion will allow us to figure out that the initial angular velocity is 20.7 radians per second. We'll do something similar for the final. That's 5.7 revolutions per second multiplied by the same conversion factor will give us 35.8 radians per second. There's some other unknowns. Uh, we have the angular acceleration is not known, but that's what we want. We have a time that is not known, but that's what we'll want. And we have a change in the angle. That is something that we can presumably figure out. We can figure that out because we know how to relate linear distance with angular displacement. Delta theta is supposed to be s over r. And so this distance of s over r is 220 meters divided by the radius of 0.32 meters. And so the number of radians involved here should be 687.5 radians. So at least we've got our knowns listed and we have our unknowns indicated there. How are we going to solve for this? The concept here is something to do with motion, not necessarily just linear motion, but angular motion as well. And because we are going to assume that we have constant angular acceleration, we will use our uh, kinematic equations for angular motion. So the concept is kinematics. The equations that we might need are these. The final angular position is equal to initial angular position plus omega naught t. These look just like the linear versions. We have 
omega final equal to omega initial plus alpha t, and we have the one that involves the squares of the speeds. Okay, And so if we want to figure out what is alpha before knowing anything about the time, then we might as well try to use the third equation. So let's go ahead and try to do that. The third equation can be used to solve for alpha if we simply rearrange, do some algebra, subtract omega naught, and divide by 2 delta theta. That will give us alpha. We have now all the numbers that we need. We have the initial and the final value of the angular speed. We have the uh, displacement, the angular displacement. And so what we get when we plug in those numbers should be about 0 0.62, and the units will now be radians per second squared for alpha. In part B, we want to figure out how much time has elapsed during that travel. Well, at this point, we could use any of these equations that involves time. The simplest one is this guy right here. We can do a little bit of rearranging and write that as omega final minus omega naught. Divide that by alpha. That will give us the time. We can now plug in the numbers that we have that we have at our disposal. We've also figured out what alpha is. Plugging in those numbers, we'll find that the time is about 24 seconds. 